Hello everybody, welcome to another session for the home practice number seven. So this is the second uh, session, second part of your home practice exercise number seven. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to complete the journal ledger module, the bank module and the tax module. And then in the second part, uh, the third part actually, the third video, I will complete the accounts payable and the account receiver module from this exercise. I just want you to divide this video into a small part so that way you don't have to sit down for one hour video or more than that to go through this exercise. So if you have heard my previous lecture, what I have done is I have uh, walked you through this exercise. So I hope you guys will have a copy of this by you, to yourself. I have it printed before you started. So uh, depending on how you're doing this, I ask you that you can either use the Humboldt link or use the software that you have on your computer to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that using the Humber platform. So I'm, you need to click on this link. Once you do that, you will reach to this website. So now there are a couple of things I have to clarify. If you are a Humber student and using this platform, number one, uh, when you are on this website, you don't need more than two megabytes per second internet. So that means even though if you have a slow internet, this app will work, this website will work. Second, there is no time limit. The only time it will kick you out if you're inactive on this web page for more than I think five or 10 minutes, it will still give you a warning and give you a few minutes to, to, to reconnect it just in case if, it, if you're not active. So if you're using this software, I mean this link, you should not be able to be disconnected and I don't want anybody to use this as cues if you're writing your final exam using this application. So once you log in, you are gonna click on the, uh, once you click on the link, you are you will come to this home page. You're a student at business course, you're gonna click on that. Here it's asking me a new session, so I'm gonna create a new session. And here I'm gonna be connected here. And you are gonna be using say 300, so you're gonna click on say 300. And once you click on the Sage 300, what I want you to do is, I already told you guys previously as well, I want you to connect your OneDrive or the Google Drive into my files, okay? So when you are logged in, before you start the exercise, what you're going to do is you're gonna click on my files. You see this, I have a OneDrive because I linked as a professor, as an instructor at Humber College, we have access to OneDrive. So even for me to get this one drive, I have to click on this add storage. So when you are a student, you have access to the Google Drive. So once you click on this, it's gonna ask you to link a Google Drive. Once you click on it, it's gonna ask you the user information. You're gonna use the user information, which is your Humber user at humbermail.ca. And you click on it and it's maybe ask you your password, you enter everything. Once you enter all that information, that Google Drive will show up here, okay? Once it shows up here, what you're gonna do is, you, the way that I'm clicking on OneDrive, you will click on the uh, Google Drive, click on Files, then you re see all, uh, you see my folders, because this is my OneDrive. So if you have a Google Drive, it will list all the folders that you have on the Google Drive. And what I want you to do is create a new folder, and once you click here, it's gonna link, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this home practice exercise number seven, number seven, reports, okay? So I'm gonna call that so that way all my reports are gonna be saved into this folder. So I created that and that will show up right here and this is where I'm gonna save all my reports. Okay, uh, well I have that folder already so so yeah, so that's where my files are gonna be saved, okay? And that's something that I want you guys to do as well. So that way before you find an exam, you have your GU Drive link here, and there's all the reports that you're gonna do, you will save it in that place. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. So now to start, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna use the SAM Limited Company, and I'm gonna enter my session date, which is April 01, 2000. 20, press OK. We're going to activate the administration 
services and it's going to ask me the fiscal year the fiscal year is January 1 till December and it's going to ask me the company information here I'm going to put the exact name that I gave you your name PPE supplies limited XXX okay and that is your student number last three digit of your student number uh, select the currency as Canadian and you press OK now you have logged into the company file and now you're gonna set up a reminder and for that we're gonna go into common services scheduling and create a schedule and we call this monthly and we'll use the same description for all the users on a monthly basis remind us three days before and this is gonna happen every one month and it will be on the last day of the month click add okay once that part is done now going on to step 16 activate the GL module so I'm gonna go admin services and activate and I'm gonna activate the general ledger module next next and activate done once that part is done then I'm gonna go into step number seven to set up the GL options so I'm gonna go into GL setup and the options and here you can put your name if you want to I'm not asking you to do it but if you want you can do that okay, it's not letting me on oh, this okay and here under the account you don't need to do anything right now you don't have to worry about it. if I don't ask you to do anything don't worry about this uh, then I ask you to change the years to seven years so you use seven years here under the segment I want you to have two segments segment one is your accounts with the four digits then the second one I want you to have departments and for that I want you to have two digits and then here you have to mention which account segment is your account number which is the account number segment one done but you're done with step seven now you're going to step eight is to create two segment codes segment codes here is zero one for masks and insert to go to the next line zero two two sanitizer And save okay going into step number nine creating account structure so we're gonna have two account structure one is ACC for just an account and that's only accounts and we're gonna use this as a default for all the accounts add then we're gonna create the second one which is the department so this is departments and that one should have account number first then the department number add. so now I'm done with number nine and number ten I want you to change the printing setup so printing setup, I'm going to click on file print destination and this is your default It's going to be your preview paper size orientation don't select this a4 this is for the letter size you are selecting this one letter A4 right here so preview paper size orientation and A4 okay now I want you to print the segment code so here I'm gonna print the segment code I'm gonna go to GL reports and print the segment code where it is right here all the segments we're gonna click print When you click on print you can export this to a PDF and I'm gonna save it see here when I click on this PC I have my OneDrive and temporary folder so you should have your G Drive everybody I don't want anybody to use the temporary files if you do I want um, you are taking the risk I'm not suggesting you to use a temporary file but if you decide you want to use the temporary file 
you have to copy that right away and put it in the C drive at the same time. So here I'm putting it into OneDrive, I'll go to my files, look for the home practice reports, I already have a segment code, I'm just gonna replace it, okay? So that is my segment code. If you decided to use a temporary folder, which I'm not recommending to anybody for some reason, you have to use the temporary folder. And what I will do is, I'll save it here. I'm gonna say R1. I'm only gonna do this for this practice. I mean, for just the first exercise. And then after that, you have to do it. You have to remember how you're gonna process this. So it's still saved, but it's still it's saved on your temporary folder. It's right here. So what you wanna do is, you wanted to click on it. Now see, this is downloaded on your actual download folder so if you guys see this now this is sitting in my download folder right here so you have to do this before you actually move into the next step because you don't want to take a risk with the file okay so if you planning on using a temporary folder just in case that you don't get the g drive you must move your files as you work along by clicking on the folder going to temp file and double click on it so it gets saved on your download folder on your desktop on your computer all right so moving on to the next part number 12 is where you're creating the account so this one may take you five minutes to do it okay i'm sure you guys have practiced so that we won't take that long so you are going to gl accounts and list them create all the accounts so how many accounts i have here is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen accounts Okay, so if it takes 15 minutes to create that account, that's fine as well, but try to do it as soon as possible. So number, you can assign whatever you want. So the 1000 is my bank account, ACC, and it's a debit, and that's a balance sheet account. And what group this belongs to? Cash, add. See how quick it is? 1200. Uh, it is my account receivable, debit, balance sheet, and it is account receivable. Then 1300 for inventory, debit, balance sheet, and that is number three add. Then we have is furniture, 1400. I'm gonna call this furniture and fixture. debit balance sheet and it is the fixed asset and then we have is 1450 that is accumulated amortization now this one has a credit balance and that is accumulated deposition still a balance sheet 1450 and bank loan now moving into the 2000 range because that's my uh, liability account bank loan credit yes and this is a long-term liability add then the next one i have is the accounts payable so i'm going to do is 2100 accounts payable and the account group is accounts payable number eight then i have is 2200 HSD on sales credit. Uh, do we have do we have HSD account? I don't think so. So we're gonna use other liabilities. Add then we have 2250 and we're gonna call this HSD on purchases. Now still a liability account and I'll put that debit because I know this account has a debit balance. Add. Jesus. Okay. 2250 is done. Now I move into the capital. So 3000 is my capital account and that is a credit and still a balance sheet and it's a sure capital add. Then I'm gonna create 3200 for retained earnings. 
as a credit this is the retained earning and this is shareholders equity now moving into the revenue accounts 4000 now this is I have two revenue accounts one is for mask another one is for the sanitizer so this one because this is relevant to the department so I'm going to put 4000 dash the department number so the two departments I have is 01 and 02 so 01 represent revenue for masks masks and now this one account structure is going to be changed to department because this is a department account and the balance is credit mark but this is an income statement account and it is a revenue then I'll do 0 to revenue for sanitizer sanitizer and that's again same information I'm done with my revenue account I'm moving into the cost of sales 5001 and it's cost of sales for masks and it is a debit balance and it is my cost of not the inventory it's a cost of sales then I'm going to create 0 2 and I say cost of sale sanitizer and same information goes for that as well then I actually I have a revenue discount which I forgot so I'm going to do 4000 one okay and I'm not doing that for the department I'm keeping a discount account as a general account so revenue discount so if you are giving a discount I'm not allocating to which department I'm simply doing it as my revenue account but it's gonna have a debit balance but it still belongs to the revenue account I forgot that that's actually right below the revenue sanitizer so I'm gonna create that as a 4001 oh it doesn't match as a format because this has to be an account because this is just an individual account nothing related to the revenue okay so where were we so I created that created 5000 zero zero two as well so now the next one that we are going to create is the bank charges so i'm going to do that is 5100 i'll call that as a bank charges now that's also an account because it's not specific to the department it's just the journal account and i'll put that as a fixed expenses and add then i have another one is rent expenses so I'm going to do that as 5200 rent expenses and that is also fixed expense and added okay so that's how you will create all the accounts so I'm click on the browser just to see that I've created all the accounts that I need yes I have bank AR inventory furniture cumulative amortization bank AP HST capital Returning revenue cost of say I mean discount cost of sales bank and rent. So I have all the accounts now. I'm done with the accounts. See, it doesn't it didn't take that long. So but it is it comes with a practice. So I'm sure by this time if you have enough practice, if you are lacking practices, nothing you can do at this time. I've been telling you guys to practice as much you can. Now you have a week, do practice because your exam won't be the same, but similar so that way you have good practice on that so next thing that i want you guys to do is print the chart of account so for that you are going to go into your report chart of account and i want the detail one long form and i will click print and it shows up right here and it makes sure your name is there if I see any reports coming to me without the name you are getting zero for that okay so here I'm gonna save it I'm gonna click on this icon right here PDF 
and it's going to go into I'm not going to put it into a temporary folders I'm going to go into my OneDrive files and the home practice reports and this is number two okay so that is your chart of account close it and close it the next part we have is we're done 13 now we're going into 14 to set up the routine running as a default closing account so i'm going to gl setup options accounts yes your default closing place you click right here save that's your default closing account once that part is done we are ready to create a new fiscal year okay the good thing in this company that because it's a brand new company there's no opening balances so therefore you're not required to do the opening entry so now we're ready to move the the fiscal year into the new year now before i do that i just want to show you guys if you go into schedule uh your common services look at the fiscal calendar see what you guys see there is 2019 2019 is there Oh, oh. Was it starting from zero one April? Hmm. Okay, I made a mistake maybe, but it's supposed to have your period one as the zero one because I remember selecting the fiscal year as January one two thousand twenty. So I don't know why this is showing up like that anyways if that is the case then i will let you know what you do uh so well i thought i would put the fiscal year as 0101 2019 but and not the end of the world that that you had to worry about so let's try to create a new fiscal year so journal ledger and go to geo setups now priority processing and we're going to create a new fiscal year click process okay so yeah there is an issue use the physical calendar window in the common services to create a new fiscal year just because we started this during the month like in the middle in April the system want us to create a new fiscal year first under your common services so you have one extra step to do okay so also usually happens if you are doing a conversion during the month i mean during in the middle of the year so fiscal calendar we have to create a new 2021 right here because right now we only have 2020 we are going to click on new to create the period starting from april 1 okay so we just have to come under the fiscal calendar and click on this new right here once you click on new it's going to create 2021 because it need the 2020 starting from here so once you click on this you have the new year starting from April 1 2020 that's fine we're gonna keep that year for for this exercise so we click add and then we close it so now you have 2021 fiscal calendar created in the common services now we can go into the GL priority processing create a new year and click process so now new year 2021 is created and we close it and we close it here okay so once that part is done we are going to go into exercise 16 change the fiscal uh, the session date to we're going to go back into our company and we are change the session date to 0 4 30 2020 close that now what we can do is we're going to activate the bank and the tax module so here we're going to go into the admin services again and we are going to go into the data activation and we're going to click proceed and here we're going to do bank and it's going to ask you the sub ledger and the tax services we're going to press ok there next and click activate once done you close it now what you see there is that you have bank and tax services 
So we're done with step 17. We're going to go on. Step 18 is add the bank record. So right now, we don't we created the bank module. We don't have actual bank. So what we're going to do is under the bank services, we are going to create the actual bank. So we're going to click on the banks. And here we're going to create the bank. We're going to call this RBC. RBC checking account. Transit number is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the account number is eight, nine, zero, six, five, zero, X, X, X. And that X, X, X is your student number. Your deposit slip starts from one, zero, one. One dollar for the error and 45 days for that. Clearing. Account, your bank account is 1,000, I remember that. Write of account, we're gonna select the bank charges account. And bank charges here as well. Add. Address, we will leave it blank. We don't need to worry about it. If it's given to you, you will complete it. Uh, check stocks, I will give you all the information that you need. So here we're gonna call it is Chad. And the description we're gonna call this is check and advice and the next number is going to be one zero zero one combined advises and check form we're going to select is the 1410 rpt and taxes you don't worry about the balance we don't worry about click save now that information has been saved right now and we will close it okay so that's how you will save the bank record once the bank record is saved you're going to print the bank report to show me that you you created the bank report so you are going to go into bank setup reports and click on the banks and we only have one so we're going to leave it default as it is and click print and that's it's going to print the banking information Everything that you set up is right here, and I will double check. If I don't see this XX, remember what you're gonna get. Zero, and you will be penalized for that because technically if I don't see any student number listed right here, I won't assume that it's gonna be your fault. Okay, so once this is there, we're gonna save it, PDF it, okay, and that is report number three. Okay. All right, so once that part is done, we move into the taxes. So we move into the tax part. So when you come to the taxes, we're gonna set up the different parts. First, we're gonna do is tax authorities. And the tax authorities, what I'm asking you to do is create the tax authority as HST. And no reporting, leave this as it is. Zero selling price at the invoice level so technically everything else default when it comes to the account that's important to select the appropriate account the liability account is the HSD on sales is it recoverable yes and what is the recoverable amount account is the HSD on purchases 100% that's how simple it is then you once that part is done you can say yes we want to add it then we go into the tax classes. Now this may take a little bit of time because you are gonna set up the tax code for HSD, sales customer, sales item. Then you're gonna do purchase, vendor purchase item. So you're gonna do sale customer, class one is taxable, and class two is non-taxable. And we click save. Now I'm going to click on customer items and do the same thing here. Oh. Taxable. And then press insert. And it's a non taxable. Save. Then we'll do the same thing with the purchases. Vendor 
taxable insert to the second line non taxable save then I'm gonna do that with the item taxable insert then this is non taxable so technically if I were to set up for one it has to be done four times okay so that's part is done then the next one you're going to put the rate so this one has to be done twice so the HSD for sales is 13% save HSD for purchases is also 13% and save that is done now we're going to have to do a tax groups so tax group is Ontario and that one also has to be done twice and that is the HST save and we're going to do purchases and again it is Ontario has HST and everything is linked automatically okay save and close okay so that's how you will do the tax group so once that part is done we set up the authority classes the rate and then we create a group because we only in Ontario we're simply going to do the tax group for Ontario so once that part is done the one report that I'm asking you to do is the tax reports and the tax authority only so you click print and it's going to show up your tax authority which is the HST and you will simply save this one into the folder that you have now that one is this one is R4 and that is taxes okay, and close and that part is done so your taxes are done and the next part that you're going to have is now you're on step 25 record the following transaction for the month of not January it's month of April so there's a typo in the exercise so it's record the following transaction for the month of April in the journal ledger batch so we're done setting up the taxes now we are we apply for a bank loan and we received it now we have to record that entry so you have to think about the entry is you receive a bank loan that's debit general bank account and credit the bank loan but for us to record that we have to create a new batch batch number one and we're going to say loan and here is also bank loan and the document date we're going to put the day that we have that we see the loan on 10th and this one you have to put the source code we're going to put the journal entry and here we have to select the account debit the bank account by $10,000 and then press insert go to the second line and we'll select the second con which is the bank loan that's credit by 10,000 and click add now the entry is saved you're going to say ready to post to yes and click post now that entry is posted now once that entry is posted in the next step what I'm asking you to do is print the posting journal so we are going to go into the GL reports, look for posting journal, and we wanted to print number one. Click print and click on that button right here. And okay, and this is your R5 posting journal bank loan. Place it, yes. And we replace that one. So now we have done your posting journal entry for the bank loan. Okay, so you're done up to step 26. So technically, you're done almost halfway because we've done the general ledger setup, we've done the taxes, we've done the bank, and we record your transaction as well. Okay, so I would say we had more done more than 50%. So 
So this is about, the, about up to step 26. So I'm gonna stop right here and, and then I will record another video which will be the third video of home practice exercise number seven and that will include the accounts payable and the account receivable transaction from step 27 to step 45, okay? So I'm gonna pause the video right here then I'll be back with another video that will cover up everything else starting from 27 to 45 steps. So now before you close, you wanna make sure if you have files saved in the temporary folder, you put them into your C drive by just double clicking it and will download it on your download folder. If it's sitting on your OneDrive and you want it to download it, instead of going through the hassle of retrieving that later, you can simply click on it and that you just click on the individual files. This one right here, it gets saved. This one gets saved. R3, R4, R4, and okay, well taxes I need R5, okay? So I have all my five files on my computer, okay? I'm not shutting it down, but if you continue, you will continue that into the next exercise, okay? Thank you everybody for listening and I shall see you in uh, another video. Bye-bye.